Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Oppo Find X9 Pro, but things are gonna be a little bit different with this teardown. This phone isn't even released yet, so we're going to be taking our tools with us from Canada to China, because we'll be doing this right here in Oppo's factory, and they didn't even tell me how to open this up, so let's figure it out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. So Oppo did fly us out here, but that doesn't mean we're going to go easy on them. This phone is extremely stacked beyond any phone we have in the West, and you're about to find out exactly what I mean. On the outside, this phone has what they're calling a quick button, which looks familiar. This opens the camera, obviously, and there is no real button here. It's all haptic feedback via the vibration motor. We also have another button up here called the snap key, which, you guessed it, allows you to quickly perform certain functions. Functions. Now, this phone may look like your average slab phone at 8.25 millimeters thick, but on the inside, that's where Oppo absolutely destroys the competition. We'll grab our clamp and start heating up the phone. The Find X9 Pro has an IP68 rating and an IP69 rating, so getting it open isn't extremely easy. The IP68 rating is more so for submersion, and the IP69 rating, it's to see how the phone fares against high pressure water jets and extreme temperatures. The back glass is starting to come up now so we can remove the clamp and slide our plastic prying card around the edges. Open it up. That is the Oppo Find X9 Pro on the inside. It's a pretty good looking phone and take a look at those cameras. They're absolutely massive. It still kind of blows my mind that Oppo is completely fine with me tearing down their phones, but with a phone like this, I can kind of understand why. And right over here is actually the pressure equalization membrane. It's basically just a small hole to make sure that there's no pressure buildup within the device. Before we go ahead and unscrew everything, you'll notice that there's obviously three cameras. The main is a 50 megapixel camera, the bottom is a whopping 200 megapixel telephoto camera, and this one over here is the 50 megapixel ultra wide camera. But then you have this. It's a true color camera, which pretty much helps your phone see the colors the same way your eyes do, and it works well. Then obviously we have the wireless charging coil down here, which charges your phone at a whopping 50 watts. It supports reverse wireless charging up to 10 watts as well. For reference, the S25 Ultra only reverse wireless charges at 4.5 watts. Anyway, we'll hit the Find X9 Pro with an unscrew. These are all Phillips screws and relatively easy to find, minus the few hidden ones. But once we have them all out, I can finally show you what makes this phone so special. We'll remove the midframe, and now you can get a sneak peek of those internals. Everything on the midframe is connected via these pads, so there's no need to disconnect any flex cables from the board. The midframe also includes the rear microphone and laser focus hidden and tucked away to save space. There's so much to look at here, but before we go further, we need to disconnect the massive battery, which is this cable over here. I think this is a good time to mention that during this whole teardown, I have an Oppo engineer right behind me so I can ask any questions as soon as they come up. It's time to start removing components on the board so I can show you just how compact this phone really is. We'll remove the massive 200 megapixel camera, which is also attached to the true color camera to once again conserve space. They also have this small little elevated portion on the board to make the camera sit flush with the connector, something I haven't really seen before. Now we'll remove the main camera and you can see how much space these cameras really take. You can also see the insane motherboard layout that Oppo has implemented in this phone. Instead of the board and camera being separate, they almost act as one unit with the board wrapping around pretty much all the major components. Oppo is calling this layout a floating stack architecture and this looks pretty intricate. They used every cubic millimeter of space on here and managed to shorten the overall board by 7 millimeters, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it allowed them to fit the largest battery ever in any Find series phone. We'll talk more about the battery in just a minute, but on the back of the board, we have a thermal paste Z and under this copper sheet, we have the main SoC, which is MediaTek's flagship SoC 
Galaxy, the MediaTek Dimensity 9500, and stacked with it is also 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM, which is kind of insane for a phone. And up here, we have the NAND at 512 gigabytes with UFS 4.1 speeds. We'll remove the 50 megapixel front-facing camera, and now I can finally talk to you guys about this massive battery. I wish more phone companies were putting these in their phones. It's 7,500 milliamp hours, which is almost twice the size of the iPhone 17 Pro SIM tray model. Obviously, they're using a silicon carbon battery here, which are still made of lithium, but instead of having graphite anodes like most phones, they have silicon carbon anodes, which have a much higher energy density. That means you can get almost two full days of use out of this phone without charging it. Not only that, but the battery health should stay at around 80% for five years. The pull tab for the battery works pretty well, which is nice. We still have a few more components to go though, and I'm really curious to see if the quick button is repairable or not, because iPhones have their camera control button laser welded in place. There's another water damage indicator hiding a screw underneath, which isn't great, but now we can remove the bottom speaker, which has an antenna cable attached to it. Under the bottom speaker though is the subboard with the vibration motor and a flex cable running to the quick button, which suggests maybe it is repairable. Oppo does a lot of testing on their phones and so far this one has been pretty repairable, but let's see, is the quick button replaceable? There's a ton of adhesive over here and a rubber seal under, but once you get all that removed, it looks like you can actually pop out the quick button. That's refreshing. Uh, take notes, Apple. Next up, I want to find out how difficult it is to remove the front screen, but for now, let's pop out the subboard. Obviously, we have to remove the SIM card tray, which is actually a dual SIM card tray. That's kind of nice. On the subboard, we have a whopping 80 watt fast charging USB-C port, which is crazy fast, two microphones, and some connectors and a bunch of red rubber gaskets that help explain how this phone is so water resistant. Now we can finally try removing the screen. We'll use our clamp again with some heat and isopropyl alcohol. The bezels on this phone are thinner than any Samsung or Apple phone at just 1.15 millimeters thick all the way around. That means you obviously have to be very careful when removing the screen and try to avoid any unnecessary prying. A clamp like this is almost necessary. The screen itself is a 6.78 inch display with a variable refresh rate of 120 hertz. The phone goes from one nit all the way to 3600 nits, which is brighter than any phone we've ever torn down. On the back of the display is the in-screen fingerprint scanner, which uses a 3D ultrasonic sensor instead of the less accurate optical sensors. All that's really left to see now is that huge vapor chamber built into the midframe, which Oppo is saying is 33% larger than the previous generation. We're back at home now, and I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this phone. Not only is it decently repairable, but I have to say the cameras are extremely impressive, like some of the best I've ever seen on a smartphone. And I could also say the same about the screen and the battery. China is honestly really ahead when it comes to smartphones. They're competing on a whole different level and it was really cool to have the opportunity to go there. I wouldn't have been able to make a video like this without you guys. So thank you so much for your support. And uh, if you guys wanna show more support, drop a like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.